Hey, I'm Andy and this is Mock and Cheese. And today we're gonna put in a hitch receiver that's stealth hidden and a bike rack. Stay tuned. Mock and Cheese. So today we're gonna be putting in a hitch receiver that's hidden when not in use as well as a bike rack. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about how I came to the conclusion of wanting to get this and uh, what I picked. So um, I did this for two reasons. So uh, the first is that uh, the uh, Mach-E um, has had a couple of uh, first year teething issues, I think you could call it generously, that uh, can leave the car stranded and bricked and in need of a tow. And this happened to me actually once uh, in my garage here, um, and it wasn't a pleasant experience. One of the problems is that the Mach-E can only be towed officially from Ford uh, in the front. And if you latch onto some of the hooks and stuff that you can see in the back as a tow truck driver, you can actually wind up really damaging the car. There's actually a, a very recent example on the internet of a, of a Mach-E that uh, tried to get towed uh, from the back incorrectly and the car went flying down the guy's driveway and uh, smashed through the guy's garage door. I wanted to make sure that I had a way to tow my car from the back. So uh, if I got a hitch receiver, I found out, basically it'll be good enough because uh, the forces are not that great. Uh, as long as I'm not like stuck in a snowbank or uh, rolled over in a ditch, it won't be that bad and it'll be easy for a tow truck driver to be able to use that point to winch my car up onto a flatbed truck uh, to tow it to a dealer. Um, okay, so that's one reason to really get a hitch. Uh, but the other reason was that my kids are getting bigger all the time. And when they get bigger, that means they need bigger bicycles. And, you know, with the 16 inch bike uh, that my uh, younger son has, it's no problem fitting it in the back of the Mach-E. But um, once you get like towards the 20 inch bikes and higher, uh, you just can't fit that uh, into the back of the car. Two bikes is also getting a little bit tight to be able to put that uh, in the back and close your hatch and being able to put anything else you need to put in there. So it became more and more of a pain uh, of having to figure out how to fit the bikes in the car. I didn't want to get a bigger car. That's not my solution here. Uh, but I did want to look into some easier ways, especially if you go on a longer trip, uh, to be able to take the kids' uh, bikes with us. And ideally, to maybe also take um, bikes for uh, my wife and myself. So that's the second motivation uh, for getting this hitch um, and uh, a bike uh, rack that fits onto the uh, receiver. All right, so one of the other requirements though that I had for my hitch receiver was that I did not want to have to look at a two-inch square hunk of metal sticking out of the back of my uh, vehicle when I wasn't using it. Um, you know, some people are fine with the hitch being on the back um, and some people put like uh, things in the hitch receiver when they're not using it, both uh, vulgar and not vulgar, um, but uh, and, and more power to you. Like I'm not criticizing you at all, but it wasn't the look I was looking for here. I, it's not like I am uh, positioning myself and my car as being a rugged SUV that's going to go overlanding. I wanted to not be able to see my hitch unless I was actually using it or God forbid I needed another tow. And until very recently, these hidden hitches that um, disappear into your bumper if they're not being used just didn't exist for the Mach-E. But very recently, two uh, brands came out with their stealth hitches uh, or their hitches that get hidden. Uh, one is from uh, this name brand called Stealth Hitches and that is coming out actually at the end of August. Uh, it's relatively expensive though. I think it's over $700. Um, no one's seen it yet. No one's installed it except for uh, one person on the internet who um, had a Mach-E uh, and his car was used as the measurement prototype for it. And the other one is from a company called Draw Tight. They have a, a type of hitch called a hidden hitch. That's their brand name for it. And they recently came out with a model of it for the Mach-E. Uh, it was um, much, much cheaper. I think around $500. I'll put the exact price uh, on the screen here. It actually was much cheaper. And um, I've seen it installed in other vehicles uh, online. And it looked pretty good. So that's the one I went with. All right. So this is what came in a huge box about two days ago. And it's actually not that huge. But um, the box was very big, I guess, to prevent... Uh, this from uh, coming out of the box and um, getting damaged in any way. 
This is uh, the obviously the actual hitch receiver uh, adapter itself, and uh, it is pretty beefy and robust. Uh, I'd say this weighs probably about, I don't know, 40, 45 pounds, I think. Um, it feels that way uh, to me. Uh, and uh, it has, uh, you know, uh, brackets on either side that uh, I assume is going to attach into mounting points on the chassis of the uh, car itself uh, in the back. And it also has a uh, kind of receiver hole in the middle. So I think uh, the advantage of this obviously is that it's going to be kind of transparent when I'm not using it. Uh, the disadvantage I can see here, the only disadvantage, uh, as with any of these hitch receivers, is it is about 40 pounds and it's adding that to the back of the car. Can't be uh, helpful for efficiency uh, of the car, but you know, I didn't buy this car to be uh, hypermiling efficient. All right, so that's uh, kind of a quick overview of um, what I got and why I got it. And uh, now I'm gonna talk about like how I'm gonna get the thing on. I actually looked online and read these instructions of um, kind of how you would put this on. And I quickly decided that I shouldn't be doing this myself. Um, you know, maybe if I had done this before and I was confident about this type of work and I had, uh, you know, uh, ramps to put my back of my car up on it, I could try this, but I really don't want to mess this up and find out later on that, um, you know, I put it on the hitch the wrong way as I see my bicycles falling behind me on the highway, uh, hitting another car behind me. So I decided to leave this to the professionals. I looked online uh, on uh, DrawTight's site and uh, found a number of installers in my area. I called them and uh, found one that had a combination of, uh, seems like a lot of experience uh, and also really good price and availability uh, to go see them uh, today on a Saturday at 10 a.m. to have them uh, plop this on. So that's about uh, what we're going to be doing uh, this morning. Moments later. Turn right onto Greenwood Avenue, then turn left. Turn left, then the destination is on your left. One operation they tell. Hey gang, so I'm actually back from the installer and it looks like they did absolutely nothing, right? Ah, but they did. Let me show you. We cut a little piece of my bumper, which you can't see unless you're a camera looking at this angle underneath the car. I had them give me this piece and I'm going to see if I can actually get a uh, 3D printed version of this piece here so that I can get something to fit in here when I don't use the hitch. Okay, so now that we uh, have established that there's a hole in there, let me show you what you do with that hole. So what to do with this hole, you say? Well, there's this pretty heavy piece. This is pretty substantial. It feels like a good, like, 10 pounds or more, um, which is actually the hitch receiver. This is a two-inch hitch receiver. And it's got a special adapter that lets it hook in to uh, the uh, bracket and the adapter that's underneath the car. Now, the way you use this is there's a, um, a knob on this here that has a spring in it and also lock on this. So uh, once it's in, you can lock it so that no one else could steal your hitch or what's on your hitch, more importantly. Now, when I turn this, you'll see that this part here uh, twists down. Now, in order to get it so that this part stays, whoops, that this part stays uh, uh, down, which you need to uh, do in order to get it on. You push it in, push in the blue thing, then twist it up. And as you do that, it's gonna lock in this down position, the silver thing. Now let me show you how you actually get it into the car. All right, so we have this hitch here, and this silver thing is down in there. 
and that's going to lock in place once uh, once uh, the special spring loaded thing here gets to the right place in the receiver. It's in and locked down. Now you can put, they give you a key, two keys with this, and you can basically lock this. I'm not going to do it right now, but you can easily lock this and that'll make it so that no one else could turn this and take off this hitch receiver. All right, so now I've got a hitch receiver that I can take off when I don't need it, and I can put it on when I wanna carry some bikes with me. I looked at the options that I had for bike carriers that would fit into that hitch receiver, and as far as I'm concerned, it really looked like there were two different types uh, for me to consider. One type um, is kind of a, called a tray uh, receiver. Uh, they either carry two or four bikes, and the bikes are secured by putting like a hook over the top of the wheel. It's very clear that um, these um, uh, tray hitch receivers, which seem to be some of the easiest to put bikes on, are just not compatible with um, small kids' bikes. None of them fit uh, a small bike like mine. All right, so that left me with this other possibility which was a hanging bike carrier. And there are several different types of hanging bike carriers and they vary basically in how many bikes they can hold, how easy it is to put the bikes on and take them off. And also um, what happens if you need to get in uh, your trunk or your, uh, your hatchback while you have the bikes on. So the more fancier ones of these uh, will either fold down, so uh, kind of moving away but down, or uh, some of them will even fold to the side. That looked pretty promising. Um, those uh, seem to offer the best amount of convenience for me. Of course, uh, these things being the fanciest ones, the ones that go to the side, are also pretty much the most expensive, and they're also the heaviest. And by heavy, we're talking like heavy. All right, so you are looking at a Yakima Full Swing 4 uh, bike mount. It will hold four bikes and it's got this really interesting party trick that I'm going to show you right now. All right, well, when I say this thing is heavy, I'm talking 58 pounds heavy. So not, not a real lightweight thing to carry around, but good way to get some exercise. All right, so I've got like this the storage bin that I'm using conveniently as a seat. And as I get it near the car, it allows me to center myself, sit down, and then be able to lift this thing up and get it in the two inch hitch receiver so that it'll rest on its own. There it goes. All right, so now we have this resting on here. I'm gonna press this thing in here, this button. And what this button does is it moves a locking pin in there it goes. All right, so now the locking pin here is in the hole here for the hitch receiver. All right, next, so we have the hitch in here. It's not gonna go anywhere now, but as you can see, it's still very loose on here. All right, now what you do now is you'll see there is this, this red knob down here, and it's in either in two states. Either it is um, in a state where it's going to free form, go right and left and show no tension, or it's going to be in a state where, like it is now, this lock is unlocked. When the lock is unlocked, what this does is it tightens that silver thing that's inside and pushes it out so that you can get rid of all the slop and play. Tightening this as much as I can. And you want to really tighten this because obviously this is what's going to be on the highway. All right, so I was able to put my camera down, use two hands. It's a little bit tough because of the clearance here. There's not much clearance between this and this, but I was able to really tighten this. This doesn't move anymore here. Now this, just like the hitch, has its own uh, lock with a key. Uh, so not only can you uh, protect the hitch itself from being taken out, uh, but you also have a lock here to protect the bike rack from being taken off by someone uh, who wants to take it. All right, so I'm not gonna go through all the features of this bike rack. There are uh, far more extensive videos of people that review bike racks that uh, can go through every last little feature and they can put all sorts of exotic bikes on this and show you how it works with it. But I just wanna show you a little bit of how you uh, lift this into position. So you're gonna take this uh, 
this hinge lock over here, plastic thing on the top, pull that up. And then once you do that, the rails or the hitch ledge here um, becomes unlatched and allows you to snap this up into position. And now this is uh, completely up into position and you can see, all right, on this you can then put four bikes. Uh, it has a unique kind of locking system of these special plastic ties um, that lock the bikes in pretty, uh, pretty easily. I'm gonna be trying this out, but not right now because I need to get a special adapter that's gonna let me take uh, my particular kids' bikes, which don't have a, a, a flat top bar and put them on here. So, but I wanna show one other cool feature of this, which is really the reason that I got this one over some of the other bike racks that are out there. While this bike is on and the bike rack is up and imagine I have bikes on here, um, we'll probably also have things that are in our hatch. Uh, what you can do is this whole thing uh, mechanism is going to pull to the side. Let me show you how to do that. So um, you're going to open this. So move it to the right here. And this, this special locking mechanism will unlatch. And you wait until this is kind of all open and loose here. There we go. So this is open. And now it allows you to come over here, pull this special pin here, and then... As you can see, oh, you can see, I can pull this whole thing right here to the side. And this allows me to turn this like this, lock it in. And of course, I'm not gonna be able to do this in my garage uh, fully, but it allows you to move this all the way to the side over here. And then once this moves to the side, you can open your back with the bike still on the bike rack and be able to access everything inside your back. When you're done, you just pull this closed and then basically reverse the whole thing uh, to go back. The other thing I really liked about this, and I won't uh, show you this again, there's, there's better reviews of this online than I can do, but there is a um, cable here that um, latches onto the end. So this has some amount of security uh, to lock your bikes uh, while they're on the rack. Let me tell you about some things that you have to do or else you can have a calamity on your hands. The first is you want to go in your mach -E's settings and then you want to go down here, vehicle, vehicle I meant, and uh, then we're going to go uh, to power lift gate. See this here, power lift gate? I don't think I want any chance of hitting the key fob or what's on the screen here or in my Ford Pass app on my phone and have that back hitch uh, or back uh, hatchback uh, go up by itself. Make sure if you have this um, uh, bike rack on that you are changing that to manual. That is a must have priority to do. All right, the second thing you're gonna have to do is when you actually put the car into reverse, like you see here, you will hear this which is telling you, hey, there's something right behind you. I can't go back, don't do that. So what you gotta do each time you go back is turn this off. I think it might be each time you back up or uh, probably more likely it's each time you turn on the car, but you have to turn off this park assist. You'll get a warning saying that reverse brake assist isn't available, meaning like if there's something behind you like a kid or another car, it's not going to stop your car, but it is going to prevent uh, that awful noise from going off all the time. I don't think that the reverse brake assist is going to work anyway, because it's always detecting that there's something in front of the parking sensors. So that's the second thing you have to do uh, when you got this thing on the back. Okay, there you have it. So this is a Yakima Full Swing 4 bike rack um, on a draw tight hidden hitch, two inch hitch receiver that I have installed in my Mach-E GT. Hope this was helpful to you and uh, we'll see you on the roads. Black, yellow, everything. There you go, man. Oh, it's mac and cheese. Dude. Mac oh and my cheese. God. Yeah. It's even better. I didn't even know. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Wow.